Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your healing touch. Thank you for clear direction. Thank you for an anointing in the midst of storms, challenges, setbacks, setups. We thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You know, sometimes we just need to relax and take some time. Don't get in a rush. See what God wants to say. See what God wants to do. So many people are in such a rush. I don't know what there is out there that you want to get back to. When you come in here, this, this is a place of peace. This is a sanctuary. It's a place of hope place of strength, place of joy, place of restoration and healing. Let me say it like this. This is a place for all the things of God, just all the things. Just all the things. What do you need? That's what he is. What do you need from him? That's what you can get here. You need a word, you can get a word. Amen. Do you need confirmation? You can get confirmation. Amen. Do you need peace in the midst of your storm? Peace is here. Do you need hope? For troubled times, hope is here. Do you need strength because you are weary and worn out? You can get strength right here. All the things of God, whatever you need. All the things, that's right, all the things. Oh, he's so good to us. Well, the Lord put it in my spirit several weeks ago, dropped it in my spirit to talk to you today. Just one little word, regroup. We are halfway through 2023. Matter of fact, we're a couple of weeks into the second half. And so sometimes we need to pause, see where we are, evaluate, reflect, ask ourselves, am I on track for where I need to be headed? The goals that I wrote down at the beginning of the year, the goals that I set, the pattern that I'm on, the trajectory that I am on now, am I where I need to be? Am I making spiritual progress? Or have I gotten distracted? Look at your neighbor and say, he must be talking to you right there. <laughs> See, I know. Have I gotten distracted? Have I been, have I stepped off course a little bit? Did I make a wrong turn somewhere? It's getting quiet up in here now. And so, sometimes it's good to pause and to regroup. There are many times in life when regrouping is necessary. There are times in life when regrouping is wisdom on our part. A lot of times we need to regroup and we don't even realize we need to regroup. There are some natural times to regroup in life. There are times like when you're in school, you're a kid, and you're going from one grade to the next, and everything changes. Maybe you even change schools. It's time to regroup. As you go from junior high to high school, that's a good time to regroup because everything changes. The dynamics 
of the kids that you've been with is going to shift. They're going to be older kids, and you're the younger one on the block now. As you get out of high school and you go into a career or you go to college or wherever you go, it's a good time to pause and regroup and reevaluate and make sure you're headed in the right direction. When there is a wedding, we regroup. When there is a divorce, we regroup. When you got plenty of money in the bank, you better regroup. When you declare bankruptcy, it's a time to regroup. Just think for a moment. What are the times in life that, that you need to regroup? When a baby is born, certainly we regroup. When number two comes, we regroup again. When number three comes, we regroup again. When number four comes, we need to really evaluate. <laughs> if we understand, if we know what causes that. Regroup. When somebody dies, we regroup. When you get a new job, you regroup. When you lose a job, you regroup. When you get a bad diagnosis from the doctor, you might better regroup. There are many times in life when we need to regroup. And now we're halfway through this year. Are you where you thought you would be? Have you reached the goals that you plan to reach up to this point? Where are you? It's time to regroup. Did you know that the word regroup is a military term? It's a military term and it means to come back together to a tactical formation, to get back into a tactical formation. It means to reorganize for renewed after effort after a temporary setback. So when there are setbacks in life, we need to regroup. And from a military strategic standpoint, uh, a, a strategizing for where we need to go in this spiritual war that we are in, because we are in a war. Whether you want to realize it or not, we are in a war. Maybe you don't understand, but we are in a battle. Maybe you don't under understand that the enemy is coming to steal, kill, and to destroy. And he wants to take everything that is precious from you, your family, your finances, your health, everything the devil wants to steal from you. We are in a war. And the battle that has been launched is raging more than it ever has. We live in America, the greatest nation on the planet. However, however, of over 200 plus nations around the world, I don't know of any other nation, and I've been to over 50, and I don't know, that, know of any other nation that will just open their borders and let people come in without vetting them. What nation would do that? Israel wouldn't do that. Canada wouldn't do that. Mexico wouldn't do that. And you can name another 200 that would not do that, yet we are doing that. Don't get mad at me. What nation are we living in? What age are we living in? We need to regroup. I'm not saying people aren't welcome. I'm saying people need to be vetted. Would you just open your house? And put a sign out and say, y'all, come on. Come on in. We'll feed you. We'll clothe you. We'll take care of you. Without seeing who they are, see what their agenda is, they may be coming to kill you. We need to regroup. It is time for us to regroup. Christians need to regroup. Matter of fact, Christians need to group together a little bit instead of everybody doing their own thing and having their own agenda and their own plan and their own denomination and their own purpose. If Christians could just get together, what could we do? It is the absolute largest organization in the world. There is no other body of people larger than the group of Christians around the world. We have people in every city, city, every village, every planet. I mean, every, uh, every planet, that's right. Every state, every nation, every continent. That's what I was trying to get out. We have people everywhere. 
Yes, we do. And we need to group and regroup. It is time for us to regroup. So I often say everything about you was built to go forward. It is. Everything about you was built to go forward. When you look at your body, we were built to go forward. We were not built to go backwards, even though you might can take a few steps backwards. I can walk up these steps backwards. I might hurt myself if I'm not very careful. I might hurt myself walking forward. But there's a better chance that I'm going to have success going forward, moving forward, negotiating forward, doing everything forward. My face is on the front of my head. My eyes are on the front of my face so they can see what's in front of me and tell me and communicate and download so I know what I'm dealing with. My arms, my hands, they're out in front of me so I can deal with what I, what I encounter in front of me. My back is uncovered. That's why we need each other, to have each other's back. When you put on the whole armor of God, everything is covered except your back. We need each other to have each other's back. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to me and you right there. Come on, just tell him. He's talking to both of us right now. So everything about us was built to go forward. But sometimes we need to regroup before we can even go forward. Because we've had a setback, a knockback, a knockdown, a distraction. And we've gotten off course. We've gotten, we've made a wrong turn somewhere. We've moved in the wrong direction. We've taken the wrong advice or the wrong directions. And we've started down the wrong road, the wrong path, the wrong direction, the wrong way. And we need to back up, to evaluate, to pause, to regroup so we can go forward. Because everything about you is built to go forward. There are several ways that we need to regroup. Number one, we need to regroup in our faith. If you find yourself in a setback... The first thing we need to do is just regroup and realize that we are Christians and we need to regroup in our faith. By that, I mean we need to get back to the basics. I'm not saying that you need to have faith, even though you are supposed to have faith. He said, have faith in God. I'm talking about the faith. I'm talking about the basics. I'm talking about the Bible. I'm talking about the fact that if you are a Christian, then somewhere along the way you got saved. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace you have been saved. And you did that through faith. And this, this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by your works, so that no one could boast. So we need just to regroup and say, Hey, I may be having problems right now. I, I, may, I may be upset. I may have a setback. I may have a problem, a challenge. I, I might have messed up myself. I might have done the wrong thing or said the wrong thing or been in the wrong place. But let me just regroup and realize, hey, I'm saved. I'm saved. I gave my heart to Jesus. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. And then 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we live by faith, not by sight. One translation says we walk by faith not by sight it's not what you can see it's the faith that you have the faith in this word the b-i-b-l-e if you have your bible just wave it at me today i just want to know does anybody still have a bible does anybody still carry a bible because this is the foundation and we need to regroup in our faith in the basics of what this word says and if you're halfway through the year right now and you've been knocked back and things are not where they ought to be and you're not on the course you thought you would be in to fulfill your purpose then just regroup for a moment in your faith faith the best way to do that is just lift your hands to him and say lord it's me i need your touch right now forgive me of all my sins cleanse my heart fresh today fill me help me baptize me with all you have in the name of jesus right now in jesus name regroup in your faith and then i want you to regroup in your focus When you know that you have your faith and, and you are established on the solid rock and he's put a new song in your mouth and you're singing praise to him, then sometimes we need to focus because we get off focus. You still see the plan. It's just not clear. It's not in focus. You need to focus the lens. You need to bring it into clarity so you can see exactly what God wants you to do and which way he wants you to go. You need to focus, concentrate on what he wants you to do. Isaiah 50 verse 7 says it like this. For the Lord God will help me. You're not by yourself. 
You're not on this journey alone. For the Lord God will help me, therefore I will not be distraught, dis disgraced. Therefore, he said, I have set my face like a flint. That sounds like focus to me. I have set my face like a flint. I know what the target is. I know what the goal is. I know what the vision is. I know what the plan is. I know what my purpose is. And I have set my face like a flint. And I know that I will not be ashamed. When you focus, you're headed in the right direction. When you are focused, your goal is clear. Your vision is clear. Your purpose is clear. Set your face. Like a flint. We need to regroup in our focus. Too many folks, they've got things out of focus. They see, the, they see the things on the horizon, but out of focus. Set your face like a flint and refocus. Regroup in your focus. And then we need to regroup in our commitment. Once we get regrouped in our focus... Our faith is established. We know we're right with God. We need to get our, our focus right. Then we need to regroup in our commitment. Mm, I knew it'd be quiet right there because people don't like the word commitment. They have a hard time saying that. It's like I, I need to do what? I need to. Commit? Uh-huh. Yeah. God wants you to commit. Some folks, they have trouble with commitment. Thank you for those amens. You know why they have problems with commitment? Because we can make our own plans. We like to make our own plans. Proverbs 16, 1 through 3. We can make our own plans. But, but the Lord gives the right answer. See, we want to make our own plans. We want to do our own thing. But the Lord gives the right answer. People may be pure in their own eyes. Most of us are. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to me right there. <laughs> we all pure in our own eyes. We all feel pretty good about self. Maybe people may be pure in their own eyes. But the Lord examines their motives. Look at your neighbor and say, he got you under a microscope. Yeah, he got you. He's got you under a microscope because, you know, my, my, I'm pure in my own eyes. We're talking about commitment. So the next part says, commit your actions to the Lord. Commit your actions to the Lord, and watch this, and your plans will succeed. So we need to regroup in our commitment, commit our actions to the Lord, and then we will succeed. You will have good success. He told Joshua, you will have good success. You want to take that land, go. You will have good success. See, when we get set back, we need to regroup. But if we regroup in our commitment, see, a lot of times people are not committed. They want to see who else is committed. Yes, sir. And if there's not other people committed, they ain't committed. We, we have to be committed for our own purpose. Somebody say regroup. regroup. Come on, say it like you mean it, regroup. Then we need to regroup in our life choices. Psalm 119, I have chosen the way of faithfulness. What is your choice? Which way have you chosen? Have you chosen to be faithful on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday you do your own thing? The Bible says there is a way that seems right into a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. We need to be careful in our choices. We need to regroup in our choices. If I could say it very simply, I would just say choose wisely. Everything that you do, choose wisely. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set my heart on your laws, God. I hold fast to your statutes. Lord, do not let me be put to shame. I run in the path of your commands, for you have broadened my 
understanding. Wow. Choices. Could I say that choices matter? You think choices don't matter? Choices matter. Your choices matter. Folk, folks are watching you. Others are watching you. You're the only Bible some people ever read. So your choices matter. When you have your little secret sin. And you don't think it affects anybody but you. First of all it does affect you. But choices matter. Other people are watching you. And there are some folks that say, well, I've got confidence in you, and if you do that, it must be all right. Choices matter. Some folks need to regroup in their choices. They need to go back to Psalm 119, verse 30, where it says, I have chosen the way of faithfulness. Just because you have chosen something and you've decided that it doesn't bother you and this is all right for me and I don't think God judges this as a sin. You need to choose faithfulness. People justify their sin. <clears throat> you want to preach now? I have killed it now. You want to preach now? Some of you preachers. Regroup in your life choices. And then when you get, uh, get those things in line, it's always good to regroup in prayer. You know, what if, what if Christians prayed? Somebody criticized us when we started seven minutes in the altar, but the stats are that the average Christian pay, prays uh, less than 60 or 30 seconds a day and the average minister only prays 60 seconds a day. We need to pray. People need to pray. Why would we not pray? Prayer is our communication with God. Prayer gives us access to the creator of the universe. Why would we not pray? You try to get to the president, you try to get to the governor, you try to get to the mayor, you try to get to the CEO that owns a big corporation, you try to get to some business owner that could give you an offering or bless your business or your ministry, yet we have access to God and we don't pray. It's time that Christians regrouped and spent some time in prayer. James 5, 16 says, confess your sins. To one another and pray for one another. Look at your neighbor and say, please pray for me. I need the prayer and you need the practice. Please pray for me. I need the prayer and you, you sure does need the practice. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, now this is key, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Our prayers should be effective. They should be fervent. What is a fervent prayer? How do you pray fervently? Like you believe it, with passion. It ought to be something that burns on the inside. When you're talking to God and you're praying for somebody that's lost, you're praying for a sinner, you're praying for a family member, somebody that's on their way to hell, why wouldn't we pray? Why would not we take advantage of the access to the God of the universe, the creator of the universe? Why would we not take advantage of that and talk to him about somebody that's hellbound? The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Now, when you pray, you should be righteous. You should have got your faith worked out, and you should have your focus on tap. You should be committed. You should have the right choices and be faithful. And then when you pray, it should be because you're righteous. He's not obligated to hear a sinner. If you're not serving God, you can pray. He's not obligated to hear you. 
1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He'll hear that prayer, and then he'll hear your prayers. Oh, that messed up somebody's theology. Some folks think, oh, I can just pray any old time. No, if you're not serving God, he's not obligated to hear your prayer. He, he might hear it because he's omnipresent. He's, he's everywhere. He sees all things. He knows all things. But he's not obligated to do anything and probably won't if you're not serving him, if you're not righteous. So get on, get on track with him and be faithful. And then the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. We need to regroup in our prayer. And when we get all these things lined up, then as we pause to regroup, we need to regroup in our worship. You know, prayer is communication to God. We talk to God, but our worship is about Him. It's all about Him. It's about lifting up His name. It's about telling Him how holy He is and thanking Him for who He is and what He's done, for being grateful for the anointing and the presence of God. The presence of God and the anointing of God and the covering of God and the blessings of God and the increase of God and all the things that he gives us and does for us. It's about worship to him. Hebrews 12 says it like this. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, it cannot even be shaken. That's what we receive from him. He said, because we are receiving this kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be faithful. Let us be faithful. I thought I'd get an amen right there. Let us be faithful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. We need to regroup in our, in our worship. Why don't we do that right now? Why don't we just lift our hands and thank him? If he's done anything for you, thank him. If he saved you, thank him. If you know he's God, thank him. Give him praise right now. Bless him right now. Worship him right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You are a holy God. You are a sovereign God. There's nobody like you. We bless your name. We praise your name. You're holy. You're awesome. We thank you, Lord, mighty God. We bless you. We bless you. Holy is your name. Powerful is your name. Healer is your name. Judge is your name. Sovereign ruler is your name. Faithful is your name. Anointed is your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Provider is your name. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We bless your name. We bless you. We worship you. We adore you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing to regroup halfway through the year. Thank you for the anointing to regroup in the midst of setbacks, in the midst of storms, in the midst of disappointments, in the midst of financial challenges and bankruptcy, in the midst of divorce, in the midst of death, in the midst of different situations. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to regroup and to go forward. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give me that next slide. We need to regroup and recover everything we've lost. How many know God is the, the best recovery expert there ever was? He specializes in recovery. There ain't nothing you've lost that he can't recover. There's nothing you've lost that can't be recovered through him. Nothing. There's nobody like him. He recovers. He's in the recovery business. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, this is one of my favorite scriptures. We know that David had been at war. And when his men arrived home back in Ziklag, the Amalekites had come and they had destroyed everything. They had destroyed the city. They had stolen everything. They had taken everything. The finances had been taken, been stolen. All the crops, all the children, the sons, the daughters, the wives, everything. And they had burned the city and they left nothing. And you can imagine 
how David and the warriors felt when they got home and there was nothing. You can imagine the devastation. You can imagine the disappointment. They've been out fighting a war. They've been out doing God's work for him, taking over the lands. And they come home and everything has been destroyed and their own home place has been violated. They broke in. The Amalekites broke in and destroyed and took everything from David's home. Wow. How would you feel? And then the soldiers turned on David. They're ready to kill him. They want to stone him. They want to destroy him. He's their leader. He's leading them. He's helping them. But now they're turning on him and they want to stone him. And the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Let me translate that. He had to regroup. He had to regroup because of what had happened. They came home in victory and they got home and everything was wrong. Have you ever done that? Have you ever gone home and everything was wrong? Have you ever come to a time in your life when everything was wrong? That's where they were. That's the time to regroup. There may be some other times you need to regroup, but you don't pause to regroup. You don't take time to regroup. You just keep going. Sometimes we humans do that. We just keep pushing. We just keep pushing. We don't regroup. We don't pause after the setback, after the knockdown, after the knockback. When we're defeated, when we have battles, when we have storms, when we have tragedies, we just keep on pushing, keep on pushing, keep on pushing. But it's biblical to retreat, to advance. It's okay to pause. It's okay to regroup. And that's what David did. He regrouped. The Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. If I had time, I would go back through every point and show you this is how he encouraged himself in the Lord. He went back to the basics. He went back to his foundation. He went back to his prayer, to his commitment. He went back to his focus. All of those things, he did those things to encourage himself in the Lord. And once he was back to that place, then he talked to the Lord in prayer. And he said, shall I pursue after this enemy and will I overtake them? And the Lord said, yes, not only will you pursue, but you will overtake them and you will recover everything that you have lost. I'm trying to tell somebody that is the time, that is the way that you regroup. You regroup and then you go forward into battle. We are at the place. We're halfway through the year. Take a moment, pause, regroup, do these things, focus, prayer, your faithfulness, get on course, get committed, and then go forward. Be encouraged in the Lord. Could I tell you we are at a good place? Metro Tab is in a good place. We've been here a little over 20 years, going on 21 years. This October will be 21 years, but we're in a good place. We've had many victories. We've had many times to celebrate, many things that God has done. Thousands of people have been saved over the years. Thousands have been healed over the years and been delivered over the years. Thousands have come through the doors of this church. It's a healing station. It's a sanctuary. It's a place for ministers and ministries that have come and gotten healed and gone back out into the harvest. We're in a good place. We went back on TV two years ago. And today, whether you realize it or not, we are broadcasting in five networks to over 200 nations around the world every week, four or five days a week. We are broadcasting the gospel, the good news of Jesus to over 200 nations around the world. On top of that, we are streaming on the internet every week on multiple platforms to literally thousands of people around the world streaming. On top of that, last year, we started the School of Roar. We regrouped and we started the School of Roar. And the School of Roar is a place where you ought to be. I don't care if you've got three PhDs, you ought to go through the School of Roar. It will help you. It is a, it is a place of hands-on practical ministry that will help you get to the next level. It will give you an eye-opening, aha moment in your spiritual journey. And you will begin to see things and begin to flow in the gifts like you've never done before. 
We're going to another level in the school of roar. We're building that studio just a few feet from where all of us sit right now. And that's going to be a place where we record the Word of God, where we do blogs, where we record audio and video, and it goes around the world. We're in a good place. I'm trying to tell you we are in a good place. Our kids' ministry is getting a revamp. In just a few days, we're going to another level. And that's a place where kids come to be taught, to learn, to grow, to be discipled, to be prayed for, to be anointed, to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, to speak in tongues, to be called into ministry, to be raised up. I'm trying to tell somebody, we are in a good place for such a time as this. So get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready for what's coming. Because we are in a war. And on the horizon, the battle is raging. You may not feel it at home right now, but the battle is raging. Christians are being persecuted around the world, in some places even being put to death. Ministers are being arrested and taken to jail. Christians are being persecuted in unprecedented fashion. Over 300,000 Christians are martyred and put to death every year on this planet. But nothing is said about that. Yet, we are in a place where the borders are open and people come in without being vetted. We need to regroup and to get ready to go into battle. Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you for your faithfulness today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the anointing that is in this house. I thank you for the call that is on so many of us. And I pray right now, God, that you would anoint us today to regroup. To be sure that we're in the right place with you, with our faith, with our salvation. Don't let anybody leave here without repenting and getting their heart right with you. We thank you for the anointing to focus, to pray, to commit, to live in faithfulness. We thank you for the anointing that's here for such a time as this. And Lord, I pray right now for every person under the sound of my voice. I plead the blood of Jesus over every person in this place and those watching online and those that will watch by TV later. I plead the blood of Jesus right now. And I pray for your Holy Spirit power to quicken us, to anoint us, to empower us, to equip us. In the name of Jesus, do it, Father, right now. Let us sense your power. Let us sense your presence. Let us renew our commitment. Regardless of where we are on the journey. Regardless of our age. Because Lord I know that you can renew all of us. Like the eagles. Do it Father. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.